then again, welcome uh, to all of you from uh, all over the world. Um, it's an honor to me to um, um, present the results of uh, Best for Soil, the European wide network for, uh, for soil health. And of course, uh, I prepared this um, talk with the help of uh, many other peoples. I would like to mention the, the work package leaders, Vincent Michel from Agroscope in Switzerland, Leendert Molendijk and Pauline van Aspen from Wageningen uh, Research in the Netherlands, uh, Gunther Weinlinger and Shiba Mehofer from Seven Regions in Austria, Miguel de Cara from IFAPA in Spain, all the other eight project partners we have, and uh, least but not least the 20 facilitators, our contact persons in 20 European countries and the contact persons for our network. My name is already said, Harm Brinks, working for Delphi in the Netherlands and the coordinator of Best for Soil. With the uh, pictures on the bottom of the slide, I try to illustrate what the network is about. Huh? Uh, Best for Soil, the network uh, for soil health. It's in the first place, of course, about people. It's about healthy soils. It's about growing uh, green manure crops, cover crops, but also growing healthy crops and producing healthy, sustainable food. Where did it all start? It started with the um, EIP Agri Focus Group, eh, the European International Partnership organizes focus group. And as a result of this focus group on soil borne diseases, five participants, five members of this group initiated the idea for Best for Soil. And that was finally funded in 2018. What are the objectives of Best for Soil? In the first place, being a thematic network, compile knowledge ready for practice. And we did it by producing videos and fact sheets and by producing two decision support tools, one for nematodes and one for soil borne fungi. You will see much more later on in, in this program today. The second uh, objective was to facilitate knowledge exchange between practitioners. We did so by organizing training workshops to initiate communities of practice. Uh, small groups of uh, practitioners, uh, farmers, uh, advisors, researchers around a certain topic, exchanging information and trying to find solutions. And we had uh, 20 facilitators or facilitators in 20 European countries being the contact persons in these countries. Um, the fourth objective, create and support the soil health network in Europe. That's uh, but we also developed the website and we used the uh, social media and we organized several communication and dissemination activities in the project. And the last objective was to conduct surveys in order to get feedback, collect feedback from practitioners. And you will also hear the results of this work later on. These best soil approaches for optimal soil health are threefold. Uh, using developing optimal crop rotations, being a strong instrument for prevention of uh, soil health problems. The application of best practices, uh, use of compost and other organic amendments, uh, growing cover crops, green manure crops, building on soil health and building on soil resilience against pests and diseases. And of course, sometimes we face problems in practice and then we have two best practices, two biological methods to really control uh, nematodes and soil borne fungi. It's soil disinfestation, ASD, anaerobic soil disinfestation and biosolarization. So active um, measures to control soil borne diseases. This is where we are active in, in Europe with uh, facilitators and partners, 20 European countries. Then uh, to the work we have done in the project, starting with the data mining for the decision support tools. The researchers dig into a lot of information, uh, compiling data for the databases. The most important information sources were textbooks, peer-reviewed articles and specialized uh, databases, and also the Dutch soil fungus diagram and expert knowledge was used for building the databases. And the good news is that all this work will also be available for others uh, after the project. And we will show that later on this afternoon in my presentation. We wrote storyboard for 22 videos around all the best practices. 20 already are available on the website in 
20 different 22 different european language uh, I, I can say uh, and two more will come by the end of march and one of them will be the video about this final conference i think good to know for all of you is that the videos can be downloaded for further use you may copy you may remix transform and redistribute them under the creative commons license so feel free to use all the material we produced in best for soil then we have written fact sheets with additional information to the videos also here 20 already ready two more to come and we will also have by the end of the project 50 practice abstracts on the eip website small summaries of the results uh, of the project and also here good to know that all the images uh, that we used in the fact sheets can be downloaded for use through a link on the website of best for soil and a small introduction to the website more will come later on in the decision support tool you can choose the crops you grow including green manure crops you can select the nematodes or soil born fungi you face problems uh, with and then you can make a scheme and the scheme looks like this in this case it is an example of a nematode scheme and that gives you information about the crops you selected and the nematodes you selected and the colors tell you something about the potential damage that the specific nematode can do to your crop and you see a big difference of course between crops and it tells you something about the host status of the crop for the nematode meaning that three dots means a very good host a strong multiplication of the nematode and one dot means a poor host and a little multiplication of the nematode and when you see a minus or you see even a double minus then you have a, a reduction of the population but again more to come later on a small overview of what you can find in the databases you find the database itself but you also find symptoms pictures of symptoms of uh, pests and diseases and you can find background information by clicking on the cells in the schemes you find the background information then to the statistics we have started counting uh, a year ago and so far that's what you see on the right side of the slide we have um, 5,000 users of the databases 2,000 of the nematode database and 3,000 of the pathogen database and a total of 7,000 page views for both the databases now to put these figures a little bit in perspective i would like you I would like to show you the, the statistics of the Dutch altischema.nl. So that is the site we used as an example for building the best for soil databases. And this is already in the air for more than 20 years. And then you see that over the last year in the Netherlands, this altischema.nl had about 10,000 users and about 90,000 views. And when you compare that to the figures so far in best for soil, then I think that tells us something about the potential for using of this databases when it will be available on the longer term and it's for sure something we aim at where do users come from i just showed you the picture with where we have facilitators and partners but also outside this consortium people know to find us the nematode scheme and the pathogen scheme have users from all over europe and I also can mention here that the Norwegian people decided that they want to have their Norwegian version and they are currently working on translation the database in, in Norwegian and they will also add additional information about pathogens to the database. Then a few figures about social media and the website. We have, uh, of course, a website giving entrance to all the videos, the fact sheets, the databases, about uh, 65,000 uh, users so far. And where do the users come from? From 176 countries from all over the world. I think that's a very nice uh, result that people from all over the world know where to find us. Of course, we have uh, YouTube for spreading the, the videos. And it's also a very successful channel for us, having almost three and a half thousand uh, subscribers, almost 400,000 views and more than three million impressions. So very nice numbers, uh, to my opinion. 
Facebook and Twitter is, of course, also channels we use, uh, almost 1,600 on Facebook, and for some posts up to 600,000 reach. We have 800 followers on, on Twitter with uh, quite a few impressions and, and views per month. LinkedIn, we are not so successful so far, but the numbers are uh, going up. And perhaps after today, we will have even uh, many more. Let's wait and see what happens. And we have, of course, our newsletter and we will send them around or we send them around to more than 4,000 subscribers in more than 90 countries. And so far, we sent uh, 10 newsletters just to give you an idea about the outreach of this for soil. Then, of course, the last part, the very important dissemination and um, actions we conducted. We had several promotional actions, um, organized meetings and workshops, specific training workshops on a certain topic. We initiated communities of practice. Uh, of course, our personal contact, we informed people about Best for Soil and we had regional workshops. And I will shortly introduce all these points one by but one by one, mentioning that um, COVID forced us to reinvent our dissemination strategy, as many of these activities were meant to be in person in real life. The COVID forced us to go from in person to online and using digital tools. We learned that um, these digital tools, online meetings can help to reach high number of people. Uh, digital tools quickly develop their functionality. That's what also what we experience uh, today. But also, on the other hand, for certain activities, meetings in persons are essential, and especially for initiating communities of practice, is um, is it important that you can meet in practice? And that was a struggle for us. Then the promotional actions uh, we had actions in traditional media, uh, paper, press, journals, TV interviews, but of course also uh, online. And the majority of the promotional actions, as you can see, were online we had several meetings and workshops in which we reached more than 10,000 uh, people also here traditional conferences congresses symposia meetings and online webinars and other online meetings we organized uh, training workshops and again same story traditional field days demonstrations, but also uh, online webinars and workshops. And then the fourth point, the communities of practice. As I just said, for a community of practice, working on problems in practice with farmers, with advisors, with researchers, it's very important that you can meet in the field. But due to COVID, it was uh, not possible for a longer period of time. Um, and as we organized, we managed to initiate 48 COPs, communities of practice all over Europe. And in total, more than 500 professional people are engaged. Um, we also tried to do it online. And as we have some digital tools like the databases, and you can use that for uh, developing crop rotations, choosing your optimal green or crops for your farm, for such um, items, an online meeting can be very helpful as people joining the meeting do have the, the laptop available for working in the databases. So for that, but for other items, it, it's a pity that you cannot meet in practice. Then, of course, we had other contacts as well. We contacted many educational institutes and they show great interest, I must say, in, um, in the work we, we've done in the videos, the fact sheets and the databases. Many of the institutes already uh, use our information. We contacted uh, policymakers as we also uh, work on uh, the sole mission strategy of the European Union. We had many press contacts and also other stakeholders showed interest in, in what we produced, like uh, supply companies, uh, chemical companies, etc. Perhaps good to mention that we also planned for um, international workshops in the four different zones we distinguish in the project. Um, they were meant to be physical meetings with about 150 participants per meeting. But as we were forced to do this digital uh, online, we managed to have in total more than 1700 attendance. That's for sure, I think, the advantage of the digital tools. 
And what was also very nice that we were able to organize language sessions. And we had sessions in, in, in Hopin and we had sessions in 20 different languages. And that was also attract, attracting many people, of course, and also helped to reach these high numbers. Then uh, the conclusion from my presentation, um, I think we had a big outreach to practitioners, to stakeholders, to educational institutes. The feedback we got showed that we have produced interesting information that can help people in practice to maintain and create soil health. The decision support tools are very interesting for practitioners and to help their management of soil health, but also that the project ends, but the work just started. So more to come. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ham, for your talk. Um, so we, it was really impressive, actually, what you did. We still have time. And very important for, all the, for the audience, just put your question into the F&A uh, chat, and then we will forward it. And, and you can also vote about, you can vote uh, regarding the questions. Yes. So. Um, I wanted to ask you, Ham, first of all, um, what um, what was actually like the the, the, the the things you took home from the project on a personal level? What did you learn from the project? I wanted to ask you. I was interested. Um, yeah, what was uh, interesting for me, uh, uh, many uh, many things we based on, for example, the databases on altischema.nl. We think that this is a very interesting tool. That's also what we experience in the Netherlands for farmers and advisors. And then, of course, the question is, how interesting are these tools also for other people in Europe? And it's very nice to experience now that many people really like these tools. When we first introduced um, this, this, this tool, many advisors across Europe said, OK, this is fantastic. We hope that this will be available for the rest of my career. And so that's something we have to work on. Um, and then, of course, it is very interesting to work on the topic like soil health. It's a big topic in Europe in this form to fork strategy in the European uh, mission on soils. And when you see that the initiative for this project already um, started in 2015 of, after the uh, EIP focus group, then we were, I think, really ahead of these uh, these policies. So we already recognized the uh, the importance of soil and soil health in an early stage. And it's, it's very nice that you can work with a very nice team with people in 20 European countries working on the implementation of solutions for this uh, for this soil health topic. Thank you. And um, I wanted to also to ask you, um, will there be like a follow up project or will there be options also to 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 interact uh, in, in future terms regarding um, uh, project um, uh, regarding roundtables, for example, or conferences? Yeah, for sure, there will be more pro projects uh, on soil health. Yeah, as I just said, it's it's an important topic in in Europe. So also mm -hmm. in, in new uh, in new calls, for sure, this is an important topic. And we also consider a follow up of uh, best for soil, as we have mm -hmm. uh, created a, a big network. We know many people already, so that's a very good basis for a follow up project. But of course, that's never a guarantee if you have as you have to apply with a new proposal. Um, but for sure, it's our ambition to continue this work and to keep these uh, tools we developed available for practice. OK, OK, thank you. We've got the first uh, questions actually from the audience. Um, one question, question is, um, Soraya is asking, how are the partners planning to maintain and update the website and the decision tools? Yeah, that's a good question. I will come back to that in my presentation uh, this afternoon uh, about the legacy of, of Best for Soil. Um, so we have some ideas, as it is always the task of projects. Uh, the European uh, Commission does not foresee in, an, in a structure where you can put, where you can, where you can bring your tools and they will be maintained. That is always um, a responsibility of the individual projects to work on it, to, to create a solution for it. Um, but of course, you need money in the long term to do this. And we have some ideas, and I will present them later on uh, in the afternoon session. 
Okay, another question. Is there any COP related to extensive uh, livestock farming? Um, no, in Best for Soil, we didn't work on the livestock farming. It's uh, on the arable and vegetable crops. Mm -hmm. And um, from Brankitza, we have a question. Is there any idea how to continue working together on these topics? Yeah, I think that's uh, the answer I just... Um, the yeah. question I just answered, we for sure have ideas and also how we can ideas about how we can uh, find the money yet to uh, to maintain the databases. But I don't think I should uh, present that now because it will it will come back in the afternoon uh, session. I mean, we, we still sure have time. We have to... all the contacts we have uh, built up in the project so far, and it would be really a pity not using it for an, uh, for a follow up. Okay, okay. Because we have enough time now still to then uh, for you to for the question and answer session, we took more time definitely like uh, for some key messages. So you have enough time to exp still keep on going and then explaining. Um, so take your time. And yeah, maybe you um, want to talk about some um, some challenges also regarding pandemic maybe but have there been like grand challenges regarding the the whole project time what do you have yeah, the mind? Challenge, of course was uh, when you um best for soil is a thematic network a network is about people and um, so when you start such a project you will meet people eh? uh, working on real problems in practice and then the COVID, of course, was was a very big challenge uh, for us, as for all other uh, projects. Uh, I think that that use physical meetings, so that was a, was a big challenge. Uh, also, a big challenge and also a lot of work was to provide all the information in twenty two European languages. Um, so um, we had a, a meeting yesterday, and what was an important aspect: translations, translations, translations. So. It's easy to write down. We will provide it in all 22 European languages, but it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of work because you also want to produce a quality text, and uh, so that was also a big challenge. Um, another thing is that we hear a lot about soil health in Europe, uh, also in the soil mission, EU soil mission, and it's always they always talk about. Um, uh, carbon storage, soil structure, and so the physical aspects of, of soil. But I think also a very important aspect is the biological soil health. And that's the main topic in Best for Soil. Eh? Uh, manage soil-borne fungi, soil, uh, and the nematodes. And that's, I think, a topic that is not so very well addressed in all these discussions. And I think that is for sure something um, we we do and we will keep on doing because you can have very nice soil very nice soil structure but when you have the wrong crop rotations and when you have you make the wrong choices for growing your green manure crops then you can create problems with biological um, aspects like nematodes and, and fungi so that also needs to have and keep having attention in the coming years Okay, thank you. And maybe I've got like a last question for you. Do you have like one or two um, key messages, take home messages for the audience you want to share with us? I know you're talking later on again, but mm -hmm. maybe you want to give us like one, two take home messages. Yeah, yeah um, um, I think that the, the message is, is different here from when I look at um, uh, the role of advisors in the big challenges that uh, will come to the to the practitioners in the coming period eh? so there's a lot that that uh, farmers are expected to change and i think part of the way forward can be found in the in the results that we produced in best for soil so please have a good look as far as you didn't do so far uh, in in the results eh? so i think we really have good tools for farmers and advisors to to help them finding solutions for uh, for problems they they face and also, I think for policy people, it would be good to, to realize that uh, um, um, Best for Soil, but also other European projects, produce results that can help it to, uh, to meet future goals. So also for policy people, um, make sure that you know what's there 
and what you can use, what can be used for the future and make it possible that all these nice results will be um, maintained, available for practice. So don't let them get lost. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a big responsible responsibility for all the projects uh, to take care that the results uh, remain um, uh, available. But I think it would also be very nice when policy people uh, in the different countries also realize that they might help to make this possible. Okay, thank you very much, Han.